Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Draw with T slash Draw with Tay. I don't know, maybe we'll just call it call the series that from now on. Maybe it'll just always be Draw with T slash Draw with Tay. I don't know, man. I, I you know what? Not enough people really watch this for me to be concerned about it. I think there's maybe uh, somewhere between like five to twelve of you that probably actively watch that, and that might be a bit optimistic, actually. But enough of that. I mean, it doesn't really bother me so much. I'm okay with the small amount. Uh, actually, the only thing that really bothers me is um, the amount of time I have to put into doing the audio work. <laughs> it's about the only thing. Everything else is fine. I mean, you know, editing videos isn't that time consuming. It's it's just the, the audio portion where I have to find quiet time in a, in a, in a very loud house and then um, record a bunch of these at the same time which then usually makes my throat dry. Anyways, you know, guys didn't come here to really hear about that. You guys came to see me draw horse armor, yes, because if you've seen the thumbnail for this video, um, you'll see me drawing horse armor. Now, uh, to be honest, I don't know if anyone else on YouTube has put up a video of them drawing horse armor. I may be the first and I, you know what, it's YouTube. I'm, I'm probably not, but, uh, it's a very, very rare topic. Um, in doing some research for this, I couldn't actually find as much as I thought. And my expectations weren't actually set all that high. So um, let's just address something first. Why am I drawing horse armor? Uh, it is because I have a character who is a hippogriff, who is the, what is the word? Mount, mount, who is the mount of a knight in a story I am working on. And basically this character needs armor. I hadn't really thought about that, despite the story being some years old in the making. Um, so I was like, crap, well, guess I gotta learn horse armor because that's about, about the only well-known documented creature that was armored, I believe. I mean, I guess elephants, and I'm sure there's some rare examples, but uh, the story is, um, you know, um, fantasy, kind of that European, especially where this character comes from. It's very kind of European, medieval, you know, playing with the tropes. Um, so obviously the best, the best real world example to, to study would be uh, horse armor. Um, for any of you working on fantasy stuff, uh, anytime you're doing anything fantastical, it does pay to look at the anything real world that's related to it. Um, if you don't know how to draw animals and you want to draw a hippogriff, yeah, it does help to like look how other people draw hippogriffs, but that's only going to help you so far. Like You'll be able to draw other people's hippogriffs. Um, you'll be able to mimic them. You might even get competent, but if you want to make something truly unique, if you want to dare <laughs> to make something that could be amazing. If you want to have a deeper knowledge than simply referring to what other people do, you need to study what that thing is based off of. Like a hippogriff, I mean, this whole, these whole, most of these episodes have been me getting closer to drawing a hippogriff. You know, a hippogriff is made up of a horse and a bird. Um, on this journey, I learned about ospreys. I improved how I draw horse hooves. I learned that drawing big cats is really hard, and they're very confusing, so that uh, an annihilated any ideas I had of possibly doing a griffin or anything. Yeah, um, so following that vein of thought, if I want to have armor on this creature, horse armor is the best thing to study. And now that I've gone on this, like, what, five minute rant? <laughs> Let's maybe actually talk about what I'm drawing here. So, um, horse armor, like human armor, is made up of a few different parts. And I found it quite hard to find as much reference as I wanted. I was hoping to find videos, um, diagrams, you know, a lot of detailed stuff. I was daring to hope that somebody had horse armor and on YouTube and would, like, show the pieces. Be like, oh, here's the, the credit, here's the, the blah blah blah, I don't even know. Um, but no, there wasn't much. I was able to find some information because I have studied human armor before, so, you know, I, I kind of 
knew some places to go, and it's not all that hard to, to find that information on your own if you're interested. A simple Google search will get you most of what you what you want to know. But um, if you hear some rustling of papers, excuse me, I'm just uh, grabbing out the sketchbook page so I can tell you guys some of what I'm drawing here. So see that faceplate on the horse? That is called Chaffron, or the Chaffron. Um, with all medieval things, the names vary. Uh, they're, they're similar but different. Um, some people say Chaffron, or you know, with the C-H. Some people say Chaffron, with an S-H. Um, you know, it's because, you know, it's French, or I believe it's French anyways. Um, and in the medieval period, you know, people were isolated, segregated, whatever, spelling. English was a different thing, there just wasn't as much unification back then, so you can call it whatever you want, you know, whether it's chaffron or chaffron. But that's the chaffron, and that's basically this piece that, uh, protects the head of the horse, obviously. Um, sometimes there's cheek plating to, to kind of block the cheeks of the horse, obviously. Some have these sort of plates that help the ears in terms of protection, some don't. Um, some of them have these sort of eye brow stretching out shields. This one that I drew does. Um, not all of them do. The top of the neck, that piece, is called the crinet. Basically that protects the back of the horse, and in the examples I saw, the crinet was attached to the chaffron, which again is the, the, the head piece. So I don't know if that's always the case or not. Um, but uh, yeah, that's... Those are two, two major pieces. Um, Though I have seen some examples without the crinet, so, you know, I, I can assume that, uh, yeah, you'd m maybe just have the chaffron. Um, so then you'll see there's ribbing underneath the horse's neck, and that I didn't find too many real-world examples of. Um, that piece, and the piece that I'm drawing there, that front piece, is called the patrol. And... The ribbing on top of the patrol, because the patrol is kind of like that, that shovel shape in the front front of the horse. Um, that ribbing is not always there. In fact, it often isn't. If there is some sort of under neck protection, it seems to be chain mail. But to be honest, there's just not many examples with that sort of ribbing. Uh, I found that a bit odd because I thought, you know, if, uh, if you're attacking somebody's horse and the underside of the neck's um, you know, left bear, surely they're, like, surely that would get hit a lot. But, you know, I haven't fought in any medieval battles, and I know, I know with armor that there's, um, you think that these unarmored areas would be easy to hit, but frankly, you, you're not going to be focusing on trying to shove your dagger into somebody's uh, armpit when they've got a sword, and, you know, they can just slice your, into your head and you're, you're gone. You know, you have to play, you're, you're gonna be defensive, you're gonna block, you know, it's, it's a different game than what you think it is. It's not just locate, you know, vulnerable area and hit it. Because, I mean, that's, that's like saying, you want to be an artist, just sit down and draw something amazing. <laughs> it's in the technique, right? So I don't know why there wasn't armor under there, but I drew armor under there because, um, uh, for the hippogriff that I'm going to be doing, um, I imagine them, all of them, this, the race, to be very, very hmm, aggressive in war. Like, uh, that that they would be rearing up and fighting with their four claws. So, uh, unlike a horse which is running around the field, you know, dodging around, and it's mainly the person on the back you're worried about in most cases, uh, I imagine, like, in this world, uh, hippogriffs are quite dangerous. You're just as worried about them as their rider, uh, both the front end, which has claws and, and a sharp beak, and their back, which, uh, you know, they, they can uh, hoof you in the back, but the front's very dangerous, so I imagine these sort of inter-hippogriff battles would uh, cause the the knights to evolve um, that underneck plating, that sort of extension of the patrol. Um, then next I kind of drew the reins, and I, I don't know horse reins, unfortunately. Um, I know in the medieval era, they kind of had, they had an interesting saddle for the knight, and it basically meant that the knight, when they sat, um, they sat very much like they were standing, if that makes sense. Their knees weren't very bent, 
And here I've kind of drawn the stirrup, I believe it is, the the, the piece where your foot goes in. I've drawn that too, too short and, and a little too forward, but uh, I wasn't really focusing on that. I was more worried about everything else around it. Um, yeah, so basically I don't know why the reins are weighted with that plating. Um, that I, I just couldn't find any information on. Maybe it's an obvious horse thing. Hey, if you're a horse person and you know the answer, please let me know, because I don't. Um, then under the saddle that I'm working on, that uh, sort of strip of metal that uh, that sort of attaches to the patrol and extends to the back, that's called the flanchard. And uh, I believe that's just, you know, a, a form of um, side protection. That's another plate of armor that you don't actually see a lot of in the uh, the examples of horse armor. And I assume that's because these, you know, if you're armoring your horse, it's usually because the person in it is wearing armor. And uh, a knight's armored legs um, are probably going to do the trick. The thing with armoring your horse or any mount is you want you want protection, but you want them to be maneuverable. Uh, there's no point riding a horse into battle if they can only, like, saunter in. Um, so I imagine they just get rid of it because, you know, it's a little redundant, perhaps. it does. It's not as effective as it could be, and, you know, just less metal is better. But, uh, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to draw, like, a very armored horse. Like, you know, if this, this... Imagining this knight had all the money and wanted, like the equivalent of a tank horse, that's what I was drawing. I wanted to know all the pieces um, that feature in armor, just so I could then, going forward, extrapolate that with, with drawing a griffin. Um, so in terms of the saddle, that front bit, that front jut out, that's the pommel. Most of you are going to know what a pommel is, but that's more of like a... It, from the front and the back, it's a bit like a, a shield, almost, the shape. It's very flat and kind of protects a little bit of your thighs. The back is called the cantle. I assume if you're a horse person you, you probably know these, but these terms are kind of new to me. And the piece that I'm working on right now, that is the crupper. And I believe crupper is also a term for um, for like a strange harness that goes around the tail of the horse. I don't know what that's used for, but in this, this instance, um, basically the crupper is like this massive bowl that just like it's one piece of metal or you know it, it doesn't really move it's all joined together it's one solid piece um and it just sits over the butt of the horse like that yeah it's just you know folds around the sides and then over the top and it's just a big old piece of metal that protects the hind end of the horse which makes sense it's kind of like the breastplate of a human um and then on top of that the sort of ridge that i drew that's the tail guard and that ridge is just mostly fancy, I imagine, if it does serve a purpose. It's just, again, added ribbing and protection for that possible weak point. And I'm not sure if the tail feeds through the tail guard, like there's a hole, or if the whole back end is open. I think that kind of depends on the style of what was commissioned um, by the knight. Because I imagine, you know, there, there's all different styles. And now here I am, labeling everything, so in case you missed it, there you go. But, uh... <laughs> That's just uh, a little under half a page. And so uh, when I started this page, I didn't anticipate or plan to get absorbed in this one image for this long. I thought I was gonna do just some quick gestural warm-ups and then in another page down the line, I would kind of do this sort of more accurate, well-drawn thing. Um, but I ended up getting absorbed into the, uh, into the first image I drew up top. And then I had to uh, attend to other chores. I had to walk, walk dogs. So I'm like, oh crap, I have like 10, 20, I don't remember how much time I had, but it was not enough time to uh, do anything else of quality, but I wanted to fill the sketchbook page. So uh, apologies for these next few drawings. They're, they're quite sketchy and rough, but um, I don't regret doing them because it's one thing to draw something super pretty and take like 40 minutes or whatever, 30 minutes, however long I spent. That's one thing. Um, but to do these quick sort of drawing note things, that can be quite helpful. Like there I said, uh, like a bell around a horse, which is just a reminder to future me that, hey, the patrol, the flat, the flanchard, and the crupper, those three things kind of form this sort of bell shape around the horse. 
And that's something for me to think about going forward as I do, um, like, griffins and stuff. Because, like, you know, again, drawing from history and real-life examples can help a lot when trying to make designs that make sense. There are certain points where you want to, like, abandon realism, but, uh, you know, those things worked for a reason. And, uh, it can make your designs look really, well, just, you know, more realistic. Like, they could actually work. And uh, that's something that kind of matters to me, you know, obviously I'm doing fantasy, so it doesn't have to be 100% realistic, but, uh, you know, just, there are certain things I wouldn't have thought about, like, the way that the patrol and the flan chart is, like, the fact the crupper is this one big metal piece, I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, when I kind of did my, my first doodles, they were very much, um, they were very much like human armor, where, um, you know, because our shoulders move around a lot. I'm like, well, you know, uh, better put a pauldron here on this this creature. And now that I'm looking at the horse, it's like, no, it's they're they don't really have a breastplate. So you don't need to armor the underside, and the the shoulders and the neck. That's all. You know, the the patrol is this one big piece. The crupper is the one big piece, and that wouldn't work on a human, but it does here. And that's something that to take you know forward. Um, oh, and here here I'm drawing. Uh, the one example of a, a patrol with the, the the ribbed undersides that I that I had, um, yeah, because you know that's that's going to come into come in handy later, um, because it's an uncommon piece. I was very happy to find some like isolated images from a museum of those. And yeah, here I am, just kind of basically finishing up the last bit. Here I am drawing the crupper to remind myself, hey, this is one piece, one big piece. Just, I can't get over that. I don't know why. It makes sense, but it's just weird. One big piece over the horse. It's like a bell at the butt. I don't know. I got a weird mind. But yeah, that's that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I had fun doing this page. Let me know if you found this insightful. Let me know if it's the only uh, only horse video on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, hope to see you in the next episode.